Hello everyone and welcome to another um, another one of my conversations. Uh, this time is a conversation over coffee. Yes. And I am in my dungeon with the gorgeous Mistress Lorraine. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. Your dungeon is amazing. It's Beautiful lovely space. to have you here. It's your first time when yes. you're coming. Yes. Um, we know each other since few years, but we mm -hmm. from events, but yes. we've never interacted. No, that no, much. no, no, not really. We either say hi and bye mm -hmm. and hello and all these things, but never really had the chance to interact properly. Thank you very much for accepting uh, my, my invitation and um, you being a part of the fandom internationally scene, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's so beneficial for everyone and everyone should pay attention to every word that she's saying because <laughs> this is the chance that you have to get to know the woman behind the image. Mm -hmm. Majority know you from online, yes. know you from um, your the interactions, from your trainings, mm -hmm. but um, I'm pretty sure only if you have had the privilege of knowing Yes, you. really knowing who I am and um, what makes me me. <laughs> and that's, that's the whole idea of, mm -hmm. my, um, of my channel, to show the women behind the image, mm -hmm. to show that behind what majority of you see behind um, the social media profiles, the website, the clips, the, um, there is actually a person. Mm -hmm. A woman, more important. Yes, yes. So, I will start with who are you? So, I am um, a mother as well. Probably lots of people don't know that I'm a mother. It's something I don't um, put out there a lot of the time. But yes, I'm a mother. I'm a businesswoman. Um, I make lots of deep connections with um, people. Um, I like to travel the world. I like to see people everywhere. Um, I'm growing within the scene of BDSM. Um, so I, I have not just one hat, <laughs> I have lots of hats that I can wear, but I'm comfortable with them in, within them all. That's why I'm saying and that's why I wanted so badly to have you on, on my channel mm -hmm. because you are that kind of woman that everyone can learn something from mm -hmm. and you can, you have a lot of experience not only from one side but on different yeah, in, 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 in different in different things because I mean even before I started doing um, BDSM as my full time mm -hmm. um, job I had a successful career beforehand where um, I managed staff and a whole different life <laughs> people probably so, so you basically <laughs> you basically did the same thing like me mm -hmm. you drop your vanilla job mm -hmm. to become a dominatrix yes <laughs> okay I'm so I'm surprised to hear that because mm -hmm. I thought I am the only one that yeah. actually did this yeah. and I'm like Thank Next you. Someone else did it because sometimes when people I mean in the beginning I was uh, I wouldn't say scared but because it's a um, when you do your vanilla job and the kind of, kind of job I had it's a nice secure salary that's coming mm -hmm. in every single month and it pays the, the, the bills and the mortgages exactly. and all these things um, so to give all of that up and to go into this world where it's a little bit more uncertain unless you do the work mm -hmm. you, you don't have any rewards from it so you have to yes do the work um it was something i really had to think about but since i did it i mean I, i've not looked back it's the best decision i ever made and mm -hmm. i wouldn't change this life for anything <laughs> me, me neither i don't i think my life at actually started living my life mm -hmm. in the moment that I quit. Same, right. the same, because the same with me. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, but you mentioned when you started, but before then, mm -hmm. I want to know what made you have this decision? The, to do this? To See, stop and start. To start that, so why, um, before I stopped my vanilla job, I was doing this in between. So I, okay. I did it halfway, so I was part-time, if you call it. Um, and it was really the pandemic because it's a, really as soon as the, as close as the pandemic that made me decide to do this full time because before that I was doing that on the side with my vanilla job. Oh my god, you're so skilled. I thought you have like tons of years of know. experience in the back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because everyone, everyone, thank you. Everyone's always very shocked to, when they hear that I have a vanilla job. I think because I, I 
when doing it, I threw myself into it and this is what I'm doing and trying to do as much of it as I can, but it just meant I was working all the time. I'm working normal job, I'm working a vanilla job and I have other things to outside like my children and other businesses and things as well. So it's a very busy it, time. It, it's, it's interesting because the vibe that you are giving is like you are within the industry, within the community for such a long and you adjusted so well, adapted mm -hmm. so well that is like uh, you are here <laughs> since I, forever. I, I think because I'm just so comfortable because I mean I've only been a pro dom for six years um, for me. It's only been six years and it, it's, it's gone really really quickly um, but professional yes it's only been three years now mm -hmm. since I've been doing it. I mean not professional I mean solely as my 100% mm -hmm. job. Um, but yeah, I think I I speak with people comfortably. I'm comfortable with speaking with people. I take some of the experiences from my past things and the job that I had and all these things. So I find it easy to network. Networking is an important mm -hmm. thing. Um, learning from other women and kind of looking at what they've done and right. how could that work um, within my business and what I'm doing. So yeah. Do you remember what was the moment that you decided? Like this is, this is what the, the, this is the this one is job that I'm going to do. Okay, so in the um, I won't disclose the vanilla job that I had, um, but because of the pandemic, lots of my staff members were made redundant um, right. because there was no work for them mm -hmm. to do. It was kind of within the travel industry, kind of. Um, so at that time, the um, the bosses had changed around lots of things within my department. Okay. So. In the beginning, I was kind of doing some of my staff's work, and then it became that they made my staff's work automated, so then there was nothing really for me to do. There was no one for me to manage, and no work really for me to do, apart from at the end of the month. Mm. Um, but then they were trying to find other things within the company for me to do, so I was sitting answering mundane emails and just bored out of my head, and I just thought, I'm worth so much more than this and there's more that I could be doing with my time instead of this and I thought this is the the time to to do it and to leave and I made that decision and yeah. how was it when you made the step how was it when you I assume you assigned a resign the yes yeah 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 I, I remember I that feeling how was it I was I was happy but also oh. A little bit daunting, a little bit scared because I, I spoke to lots of people. I, I rang Madame Caramel and I said, Oh my God, I'm, I'm going to leave my job. What do you think? What do you think I should? And she was like, Oh, well, if you're going to do it, like you have to make sure that you schedule, you plan, you know what you're doing each month, you know how you're going to make whatever money it is you need to pay your bills first off and then you can do other things and i sat and spoke with her with it about it for a long time before i made that final decision but then when i i handed in my notice and um you're supposed to do 30 days but i was going on holiday to jamaica actually in two weeks after i'd handed in my notice so i only did two weeks at work okay so when i left the next day I went on holiday, so it just felt like I was on holiday, like how you would do, <laughs> yeah, like what you would do when you're at work and then you just go right. on holiday. But then at the end of the two weeks, I wasn't going back to work. I wasn't going back to anything. It did was, have, it was did me. You, did you have any plan, like uh, before? Just like you said, you mm -hmm. received the advice from Madame Caramel that you have to have a plan. You have to have a schedule. Um, did you have anything planned? Or it was like, whatever, come it, come, bring it on. I, I really didn't, which was really bad of me. I thought, let me get the holiday out of the way, and then I can concentrate and start to plan. Um, so I, I didn't do any plan. But then when it got to, this was in August, I remember, that I went on holiday. And then it came to September, and the middle of September, and I thought, right, I need to start doing something. <laughs> Um, so then I decided, I had an OnlyFans from before, but I hadn't really used it. Um, and I went and seek some guidance and things with what to do with OnlyFans, and I really threw myself into the OnlyFans, and thankfully, <laughs> it, it went well, well. <laughs> it paid off, um, and it went really well. So um, in the first month, I replaced maybe double my salary on the OnlyFans. Wow. 
to what I was having in my vanilla job. So <laughs> wow. I, I, I'm a firm believer that when you start, regardless of the field, regardless of mm -hmm. the, the activity, when you start uh, something new and you're putting yourself 100% mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. there's no way that you cannot succeed. Yeah. It may yeah. be in one month, two yeah, months, one year, but time. eventually if you do not give up mm -hmm. and you are persistent, you will succeed. It will, it will happen. And I think this is the, the problem I had before, because even though I was here, I was in this space and mm -hmm. attending events and going to places and doing things, because I always in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, well, I don't want to do too much of this because then if work sees mm -hmm. this and what's going to happen, and I'm kind of holding myself back. But then when I quit, I opened up, did everything, showed myself I'm going to put 100% into it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it paid off. You you just said something that, uh, from my perspective, is seen as so powerful. You hold yourself back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Why did you have to? Why did you feel to hold back? Because I thought so. I was doing well in my vanilla job, and I was growing, doing well in the dom space. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was thinking if I do too much of the dumb things, it's going to hinder what I'm doing in my vanilla job. So if I just do a little bit in the dom and then it, it satisfies my needs and mm -hmm. I get to experience the things that I want to experience, and then I can still have my normal okay. <laughs> Normality. life <laughs> on the other side. But then what, as the time went on, what I realised is that the bit that I'm trying to suppress is the bit that I actually want to do more. I don't actually want to be in this other boring space doing right. those things. I want to be over here. <laughs> At any point, did you have the fear of being judged? No, because when I made the decision that I was going to practice and be professional, mm -hmm. um, because I mean, I dabbled in BDSM over many years, but when I was going to put my face out there and start to record clips and go to events and all those things, I said I was going to tell all my important people. So I told my mother and I told my sister and all my immediate family and friends that were important to me. I told them what I was going to do. Um, all of them were okay with okay. my decision. None of them were really shocked. They were like, oh yeah, I could... I could see that. <laughs> so they were supportive. That's so it. They, they were very supportive. So because I I have that support, I've never really, of course, people say lots of things and they talk about right. people when they have opinions. Mm. Um, but because the people who mean the most to me are okay with it, it doesn't bother me what anyone else says. Right. Yeah. Um, it helped you, or until what degree, it helped you to have your family support? Oh, a hundred, massively, massively. I mean, if I didn't have my family support, I think it would be a little bit more difficult me doing things. Mm -hmm. And then I probably would want to not do as much fearing that my family were going to see something or right. that they were going to be disappointed. I mean, no one wants to be a disappointment to people who they love. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't stop me from still doing this because, I mean, it's something that I need in my life. It's something I need to have here. But I probably would be a little bit more cautious with some of the things that I do. What? Uh, how would you describe yourself as a, a, the woman? How would you describe the woman? Oh, the woman. I think um, I'm the woman who, for some reason, craves being busy. Okay. Be busy all that, the time. That's something new. That's something new. It's the first time I'm hearing. Everyone else is like craving to have more free time, and you're like the first one craving to be busy. Okay, okay. busy. But the, for the reason I'm craving to be busy because I have a goal of where I want to be at a certain time in my life, and to get there comes with hard work right. and working very hard and putting lots of things in place so that when I'm at a certain age. I can be more relaxed and I can enjoy and love life and I don't have to work too hard then because I did the work now. What's your goal? You just mentioned it, so I my, can't ask. My goal is to be sitting on a yacht somewhere. It could be mine or it could be someone who I know, whichever. I, I, I like to start. Go on. <laughs> With a nice glass of champagne 
and cruising somewhere in some ocean somewhere, enjoying my life. And then next week I could be doing the same thing again or I'm going and meeting someone for lunch. Kind of sounds similar to my life a little bit now, but <laughs> okay, so you are starting to live your goal, which yes. is great. Which is great. How many people can yes, say that? Yes, can say that. You are so. I, I was about to say lucky, but it's not lucky. It's hard work. It's hard work. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. But we work very hard, and then we get to enjoy. You get to enjoy the pleasures as well. Right. When when majority of our fans mm -hmm. watch our parts mm -hmm. of our lifestyle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or what we like to show mm -hmm. publicly they think we live well don't get me wrong we live glamorous lives yes <laughs> but behind that glamour there's tons of work yes I'm there's planning. tons of sacrifices mm -hmm. there's tons of sleepless uh, sleepless sleepless nights mm -hmm. uh tons of effort i'm not um like I have a very packed schedule, so mm -hmm. I need to follow everything. How is in 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 your side? How oh, it extremely, extremely busy. Extremely Keeping busy. Mind that you you are a mother also. <laughs> uh, I'm, yes, I'm a mother. I right? I have two children, um, and single mother, which means I have to work even harder to make sure that they have everything they need. But for me to do anything. I need to make sure what's happening with them first mm -hmm. before I could do any of these they things. They are priority. Yeah, they are priority. So I'm constantly in my diary trying to figure out, okay, I can't do this here because I have football that I need to do. I need to take my time to football so I can't do this. And, oh, I can't go away here because I need to do this or this thing. There's so much planning that goes in. And I, without my family and friends, I wouldn't be able to do some of these things that mm -hmm. I'm able to do. So I have to then now go into their schedules and work out their time. And are they able to help me with certain things? Or right. it's it sometimes can be a chore, but it's worth it. <laughs> um, how is it? Uh, first of all, how old are they? So my daughter is fourteen, and my okay. son is a baby. baby. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. And how is it to be a mom in this industry? Um, oh, do you know, because I've only been in this industry as a mom, I, I kind of don't know any other way. Okay. Yeah, so I suppose maybe if I didn't have a mom, maybe I would do more events, I would maybe do more partying, and then mm. maybe if I was a little bit younger, I'm old now to have a party. But how, <laughs> how is it for you as, as a mom to be part of this? To be part of this world? Well, I actually, um, for a long while, it was lots of pretending I'm doing something else. So for my son, my daughter now knows what I do. I did have a discussion with her and told her. Um, but for a lot of the time, it's, oh, well, I'm going to see a friend to do this, or I'm doing this, or I'm doing, when I had my vanilla job and I was going touring or working mm -hmm. abroad or whatever, I would just say, oh, I'm going on a work trip. Right. But then now I don't have the vanilla job, then it's, oh, well, I'm just going to visit some friends abroad to do such and such, or I'm going to do some business away. So. I have to kind of it makes me feel like i'm being sneaky but but it's it's in a way understandable mm -hmm. because he, you chose to protect them mm -hmm. and to tell them when they will yes be when they understand and understand mm -hmm. which um i totally ag agree with that mm -hmm. if i can say that mm -hmm. uh if i would be in in your shoes i would do the same mm -hmm. because it's like let them understand and let them decide yes. what what they want to do and and i'm really sure for for them it's it's very awesome to have a mom that is a professional domination yes. well, of, of course <laughs> well when when i finally did tell my daughter she's 14 and she's, How a, was her she's a she was absolutely so fine with it and she was like oh well yeah, that's your job. I know what a professional dominatrix is. I've seen them. She already yes, knew. She already knew. Wow. It's, on, it's on every single TV program. And, well, not every single, but it's on. It, it appears on TV and in programs that she that would be age appropriate for her. Mm -hmm. There are references to it. Um, so she was absolutely fine with it, and now she thinks I'm this cool, amazing mom. And which you are. Yeah. But, <laughs> thank you. And um, her friends know about it as well now, and they think I'm and amazing. And how is that? How is that? They think that I'm this amazing woman and wow, power to you and 
how great, how fantastic, and they're all so in love with my nails because they're always so so sharp. <laughs> but I just I just happen to be the the cool mum that um yeah they like spending time at our house and they enjoy doing stuff and they like hearing the stories about the places because I travel quite a lot mm. so like hearing about the places that I've been to on holiday and the things I do and restaurants I've been to and all those kind of things. What do you like to do in your in your free time? What are your hobbies? Oh, so my hobbies is um, actually something that I used to do as a business before, but I actually make natural hair and beauty products. So wow, I, I did not know <laughs> that. So I make all my own creams and um, serums and things for my hair and serums for my face and skincare stuff. So I, when I'm having downtime, I stock up on my supplies and I make all of that for myself and some of my friends and stuff. And it's therapeutic and I like the different reactions when I do different formulas and all those things. So that I do a lot of the time. And the gym, which everyone does the gym in their spare time. Uh, not everyone. Not so everyone. I have to go. So they're like, I'm going to go. <laughs> this discussion is not for me. And I, I would love to, but I just mm -hmm. don't have time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, when I, whenever I'm having free time, I would rather just stay by myself because I'm an introvert. Yeah. Read a book, have a cup of tea, uh, some sort of a jazz or bossa nova oh, in the background yes, and no. that's my favorite mm -hmm. thing to do mm -hmm. but a gym then uh, maybe it's in the schedule mm -hmm. but, uh, you know each time like maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow yeah. so like that, that's probably... um what a treasure you are i oh, would not have you. expected <laughs> you to to have this as a hobby mm. who would have thought i, 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 I wouldn't like not in one million years. I would have, if you would have said that like, uh, you are painting, you like the yeah. music, I would be like, okay, that is nice. But this is like, comes as a shock. I have like a, a whole chemist in my garage with all the different essential oils and all the different carry oils and all the different things that it takes to make products. So um, I have that. You see everyone, how much is beyond an image? Yes. <laughs> how much? Um, let's go back to how everything started with the SMYs. Mm -hmm. When did you discover that you like? How did you discover? So it, it's, it's a very strange one. I've always, if I look back in my memories, um, I can see certain things that I didn't know that I had, but now I'm in this world, I know what that was. Um, so growing up, I've always been obsessed with shoes and boots and like the, of course um, over the knee boots I was wearing over the knee boots before people wore over the knee boots um, and I just had to have them all the time I'd, I'd buy so many each month and it's only now I realize I have a shoe and boot fetish <laughs> okay <laughs> but at the time I didn't know this um, but then if we we look at other things that they just used to be different little aspects and different things. I mean, in school, all the boys were always scared of me. Um, tell any boy to do anything and they would do it. And yes, of course, yes, yes. <laughs> Running around and doing things. And I'm not doing anything special. I'm just being you. me. <laughs> I'm just being who I am. Um, and then as I got like a little bit older, let's say early 20s, um, and then you could see things and I saw um, a program with a dominatrix um, and I was like, oh, that looks really interesting. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I looked into how you could do it and I could only see women wearing masks mm -hmm. and not much about it. And I just kind of put it out of my head and I had my children. That was um, when, around what this, age? Uh, let's say this was about 22, 23. Okay. When I saw this and was thinking about this, but thought about it, but didn't put too much effort right. into it. So then I had my children, and um, children uh, didn't work out with their father, um, and I was dating and things like this. And then I, on the dating sites, I would have people saying to me, oh, I will pay you to massage your feet or I pay you to do this. And everything that is out of the ordinary was coming to me. And I'm, why am I getting these messages? I'm just I'm here trying to find someone. I'm just a normal woman. Why is this happening all the time? <laughs> but then did you consider this request as being weird? No, I know. Okay. And, that, and that's the thing. I never thought it was weird. I was just, 
I was just more, not concerned, but just wondering why I'm getting all of mm -hmm. these messages and no one else is getting all of these message, messages. So um, I started dating someone from um, one of the sites that he'd not approached me with any of those things. It was actually just a normal person, so I thought. <laughs> okay, keep in mind that's so what I thought. Yeah, that's so what I thought. And then um, as time went on a little bit, let's say two, three months into us talking to each other, um, he brought out that um, he likes to dress up sometimes. Um, and would I do his makeup? And how does that make me feel? And I was like, oh, okay, I like doing makeup. So it didn't make me feel weird. And that progressed into him telling me that Sometimes he likes to be pegged. Mm. So I was like, okay, I've never done that before, but let me try. Didn't make me feel weird. I actually quite enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. Um, so then we used to play a lot. So in my mind now, I knew that they were um, professional dominatrix, but I didn't know how to pursue that and I wasn't looking at that. And then when I was doing this with this guy, mm. I didn't make the connection even then at that time for some reason. Um, so then he had said to me, oh, I'd really love to go to a party one time. And I was like, what do you mean a party? And he's like, oh, where other people are dressed up and there are other pro-doms and there are this. And I was like, oh, wow, like, I'd love to go to a party. And he was like, yeah, there's lots of parties that's happened. It's called The Scene. And I was like, what's The Scene? I, I had no idea about any of this. <laughs> what's The Scene? So we looked at some stuff and I was like, oh wow, this is amazing, I really want to go. So we made a plan for a certain date, that date came, mm. oh no, I don't know if I want to go hit from him, he chickened out on it. So then we said, okay, let's build up your courage and let's go the next time. Made another date, same thing happened next time. I made another date, same thing happened. But now at this point, I really You're want to go, okay. <laughs> I really want to go to the scene and to meet other people because I couldn't tell any of my friends that I'm pegging this man because this is so strange, isn't it? Who, who do, to other people, I'm thinking other people are going to find it strange, but I didn't find it strange at all, but I knew that my friends are not pegging their boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I want to meet these other people who are like me. Um, so then I went to FetLife and I said I made a, a profile. And I said that I want to find out about the scene and I want to go to parties and things like this. And then that's where I met Chris, who was myself. And then the rest is history. I, I went to a party, I saw these things and I thought... You were by yourself? No, I, I went with Chris. Oh, okay. I went with Chris, not with my partner at the time. Um, and I thought, I want to do this and I want to be a pro-dom. <laughs> Do you still remember your first impression when you enter into this place where the party was? Um, yes, the, the first party that I actually ever went to was Club Black Whip. Okay. Right, from Madame Caramel. <laughs> uh, I mean, before that, I'd actually gone to, I don't know if you know Lamb, that happens in, it's like a market. I, I, I've heard yeah. of it. I went there, but it's not really a party, mm -hmm. it's just a gathering and shop market thing. Um, but when I went to Club Black Whip, I remember I'd was it the, I think it was the Christmas-ness one, Mistress-ness, where you have to wear red, I think it was in January, you have to wear something red, and I was like trying to find, and it wasn't any fetish wear, because I didn't have any fetish clothes at, at that time, um, but I found a, a red dress, and went with this red dress, and I think I had a cane with me, mm. that Chris came, and I remember when I walked in, all the ladies there were just so happy, everyone was so happy, Everyone was smiling, they were laughing and joking. Um, I met Madame Caramel as well for the first time. She was lovely. Everybody that I spoke to was so nice. Everyone was just being lovely, being really nice. Um, and it didn't bother me at all that there were men walking around with just boxes on mm. or not even boxes on and some on their, on their hands and knees, some being used as furniture, as um, footstools. And it just, it was just a really happy place and I felt comfortable being there. I didn't at all feel uncomfortable. Um, I made lots of connections, made lots of friends there. And then I was just happy for the next event. I was like, when's the next one? I want to go again. Like it was so addictive. So it opened the Pandora. Yeah, opened, it, opened the, it literally opened the Pandora's box because 
at that time I was still lifestyle, I suppose mm -hmm. you, you would call me. Um, but the more interaction I had with these women and the more I've seen they're doing things and traveling all over the world and I, I want this life. This is what I want to do. <laughs> you mentioned dating. Mm -hmm. um, how is, uh, you're single now. Yes, yeah. Are you dating? I'm not really. I'm not really dating because I find I don't really have the time at the moment. I have right. so much going on that I don't have the time. Um, but I mean, I, I go on the dating apps occasionally and have interactions and talk with people and all of those things. But actually dating, I haven't done yet. So I don't know how, because what I'm used to, I've, in the past, I've always dated submissive men. Okay. So I don't know if I would and, want and how, to be. How was that experience um, as, as a dominant woman to date? Mm -hmm. Did you have any issues? Was it difficult for you to find um, a genuine partner? Yes. Because I think sometimes, I mean, all of the subs want to date us, right. <laughs> of course. In, in their mind, they, in want, their mind yeah. they, they all want to date us and they all want to marry us yes. and they all of yes. this thing. So what you can find sometimes is they get caught up in this whole fantasy mm -hmm. life and it's not real life. Because mm -hmm. uh, of course I'm a lifestyle dom as well, but sometimes I'm just being a normal person, not doing BDSM things. <laughs> We're not always in chains and yeah. latex and whips or... Yeah, sometimes yeah. I'm just being a, a normal person, especially I have children at home, so I have to um, consider all of this. Mm -hmm. If someone's going to be around my children, I can't. they can't be on right. their hands and knees right. um, with me. Um, so I was very selective with who I would have near me and listen carefully to the things that they're saying and the things that they're showing me um but at, in the beginning luckily i was fine but now i'm just enjoying that is to be seeing yeah. and enjoying your your life yeah um if let, i would like to make a difference from the woman that you were when before starting mm -hmm. this lifestyle mm -hmm. because just like you mentioned yeah it's, it's a lifestyle for you mm -hmm. and when you were having this lifestyle how is it, it is there any difference or how big is this the difference before yeah. you the woman you there is a massive difference tell me about it's, that it's almost as if i'm a whole different person but I was always this person inside. Um, I'm much happier now. I'm much happier in myself. I have much better connections with people now. Um, I think I have better goals for my life now. I wouldn't say that I was unhappy before, but I wasn't living my life to its fullest potential. Right. Whereas now I think I'm building my life to the fullest potential. That it can be can it be like now you have more control over what's going on mm -hmm. in your life compared yeah. with yeah yeah more more control um able to make better plans and as well i i think this probably comes from the job that i have mm -hmm. now um that i'm able to make better plans because i, I said before that i i like to keep busy so yeah. i have a couple of businesses and before i had one business now i have four businesses <laughs> wow <laughs> so um and some of that as well has come from this profession because if i didn't have this job then i couldn't invest some of the money into the other things so right. um it's given me happiness it's given me more freedom it's given me a little bit more financial freedom um and on a personal level what it has on a personal level, the thing that the, the biggest thing that it has done has enabled me to spend more time with my children. As much as wow. I travel and do all of these things, I'm actually really able to be with my children and know who they are and spend time with them. And uh, before I in my vanilla job, I would leave for work at eight a.m. I'd get back at seven if there was no traffic or I wasn't late, and then they go to bed shortly afterwards. So you didn't have too much. I, mean, I didn't have any time with them. No, I'm just the, the woman they live with, I suppose, <laughs> at that point. And I saw them on the weekends when I'm rushing to do everything and rushing right. with them to do everything. Um, but now I see when they go to school. I see them when they get home from school. 
I spend time doing homework with them in the evening. I'm I'm there. I'm present, mm -hmm. and we which can is, live which together. Which is very important. Yeah, very important. Yeah. Um, an another aspect that I want to discuss mm -hmm. is the one that um, the outsiders. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but it is mm -hmm. what it is. Outsiders, the vanilla society, mm -hmm. let's call it. Um, they tend to misjudge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest misconception that you have faced? Does my, when I had a partner, does my partner mind me sleeping with the submissives? Okay. I don't sleep with submissives. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so this is this is the thing that um, I get asked a lot of the time. But then I see it as a way to kind of educate them on this area that mm -hmm. um, we work in and what my boundaries are and what the things that I do. Um, but I mean, whenever I go out with my vanilla friends, it always ends with them telling me all their deepest secrets right? and fantasies. Right? Is that like you're, you're their therapist? <laughs> yeah. Like, because, oh my god, oh goodness. <laughs> all the time. And then me story time, oh, what about this? And how do you do this? And what about this? And oh, can I come to your dungeon? Can I say this? So, yeah. <laughs> what has BDSM taught you? Is it any? Um, it's taught me that in this space, we're able to really be free. And I don't, I don't mean free as in you can just do whatever you want, but in like every, everyone has thoughts and everyone has things in their minds and things they'd like to experience and things that they'd like to do. And in this space, people are able to practice that um, within reason and with consent and so on and so forth. But it's kind of taught me that there possibly, it might sound a little bit sad, but there possibly are lots of people who are hiding their real selves out there. Um, before kind of getting in this world, mm -hmm. you just thought everyone's just getting on with life. But then when I sit back and look, I just think there are lots of people who are not living their lives or living their true and lives. And they are not aware of this. Yeah, but they're not aware. So that, that's the one thing that BDSM, well not the one thing, but one of the things. One of the things. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally relate with this. I used to say that for me personally, BDSM has saved me mm -hmm. more or less because it has given me the freedom to explore myself, mm -hmm. to explore all my mind corners and I'm still doing it mm -hmm. now even yes. many years mm -hmm. I'm still discovering aspects of myself that mm -hmm. I did not know that yeah. they are there mm -hmm. so it gave me the the ground to play yes to be free mm -hmm. um, if now the one that you are now mm -hmm. would have to give an advice to the woman that you are like Yes, yeah. so back then. What would be your advice? No hesitations. Do what is in your heart, what you feel to do. And at the time, the old me cared a lot what people thought. Mm -hmm. um, me now, of course I, I care what people think, but I don't let it affect me. Right. And I don't let it go inside. So before I would not do something because what would someone say? But now I do something, and if someone doesn't like it, then that's their problem, <laughs> not mine. Right, right. So, yeah. And an, an advice from you with all your complexity mm -hmm. towards um, the, viewers, the viewers, towards first, towards the woman, mm -hmm. both uh, from uh, the, the community and from out, outside mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the community, with a direction towards more of a vanilla. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice? My advice um, to a vanilla woman would be, because I, I have this thing that later on in life I would love to be a life coach and be able to... You too. <laughs> I am already. Oh, you are. I am a specialist. Yeah, oh, I, just I, got my I, I would love, I would love to go into this field um, because I think, um, and being a single mom myself, I kind of know some of the feelings that women particularly don't know how strong they are and yes. that they really can you really can do anything you put your mind to totally um totally. it's just they just don't have the confidence and they don't have the 
the know-how, how to do these things. So for a vanilla woman, I mean, if she's wanting to get into this lifestyle, um, do a lot of research, um, have a look for women, like-minded women who look similar to you or are offering lessons or teachings or trainings and mm -hmm. those kind of things. Um, but also really work on yourself and your, and your confidence because you can do it. The more right. you say you can't do something, the more you won't be able to do it. Say you can do it, the more you can do it. Right. And now for, for men. For men. Men. <laughs> the, the vanilla men. Maybe listen. <laughs> Just listen. Yes. Listen is a very important thing. So I think a lot of the time they don't listen. And they go off on tangents on their own things. They're not really listening to what their partner is saying. Right. And what their partner is wanting. And I think sometimes um, in relationships, this, that's why things can go wrong because the communication isn't there. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe sometimes the woman is not saying up front what they want. Because of the yeah, lack of because confidence. Because of the lack of confidence. Yeah. And then sometimes men are just over talking and saying what they think the woman mm -hmm. wants. And I mean, if you observed and listened, you perhaps could see the answer. <laughs> and for the submissive men, they are the cutest. They are the cutest. And sometimes they are so not cute. <laughs> um, for the for the submissive men, I would say, if you're wanting to approach a dominant woman, a, a pro dom or a lifestyle dom, the most important thing to do first is to look at all the information that she puts out there, as to Her? yes, what she's about, what she enjoys doing what she doesn't enjoy doing because no matter how much money you want to throw at someone right. or how much you say or oh, just try once if something is a hard limit to someone it's a hard limit <laughs> right right and i don't think you should try and force or push especially no, as a sub no. yeah especially as a sub you shouldn't be saying this to mm -hmm. a, a dom but that's a thing that that comes through quite a lot but um making sure you know everything about that dom and, and who you're getting involved with especially now we're in this world where the people are making fake profiles and subs are like sending issue. money yeah. to the wrong person well if you read all of my information you would know that mm -hmm. my email address doesn't look like this or i don't have uh someone asked me today do i have discord i don't have a discord account it's on no none of my profiles yeah. anywhere so if you're talking to someone and with my asking. name there and you've looked at my website and you don't see any mention of it, then obviously that's not me. <laughs> so they can find all your information about you on yes, your on website. My website. What is your website? My website, very easy, www.mistresslorraine.com. With double R. Yes, so double R. R. Um, your Twitter? Twitter, you have Twitter? yes. I Twitter, I, I changed it slightly. It's Ms. MS, Lorraine LDN. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram, I have, but it changes all the yeah. time. So my <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> I don't like the Instagram, but even on my Twitter, I have um, all my links there mm -hmm. and everything is listed there. I have multiple clip stores, I have OnlyFans and yeah, 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 yeah. Busy, busy woman. Yes. Um, as, uh, as an ending, mm -hmm. I want to ask this, um, I think the majority of the ladies that I interview have received this question. Mm -hmm. If would be people to remember you or to associate you with something what that something would be um i think that i would like to be associated as or known as if i say great is it a big headed a great businesswoman <laughs> okay that's what i would like to be known as so when i'm old and wrinkly and someone say oh you know that lady that's over there on that's always on the yacht she has lots of businesses and she was successful with this and she built a, a great empire that's what i would like to be known as <laughs> and what about your legacy my what would you like to have as legacy? my my legacy i hope will live on through my children and their children and so on and so forth so i'm uh, i have a couple of properties at the moment so i want to kind of build that that can move on and go forward I want to, my children and their children and going forward not to live any struggles really, you know, just to know that they have opportunities, they can 
um, do whatever it is that they want, just be as happy as they can be in their lives. I know if my, if my children are happy, then I know I've succeeded in life. Okay. And now for you. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to yourself at this point? Probably to be more focused. Because uh, even though I, I say I like to keep busy with all these different businesses, mm -hmm. but then it becomes more difficult because I have to do lots of different things. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be a lot easier for me if I only had one thing to focus on at a time. So what is important for you? Um, like in, in general, what, what is important for you? What is important? What is important for me is making sure that I'm comfortable mm -hmm. and I'm not having to struggle for anything. Right, right. So I will end up with this. And I want to thank you very much for this thank lovely you. interview. I am so pleasantly surprised to see how much we have in common. Yes. Um, <laughs> Like, wow. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you very much. Thank you for letting them know you. And for you, I will uh, expect you on, uh, on the next episode yes. and uh, with uh, another um, very interesting person on my next conversation. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe yes. to my channel. <laughs> Bye, everyone.